Although I try lots of new techniques with the cameras and multicam sequences, this one didn't work out. So I'm gonna get you guys right into the video where I am fixing the door control module. Here's a look at how the plastic turned out on this end. I ended up using that plastic JB Weld, which definitely is a much more solid hold. If you remember, this piece here was totally snapped off. So with the old one, this actually, I just may have used it for the last time. This piece just totally broke off. So that is absolutely done for. And I've got the Amazon special here to replace it because I don't know, I've just, I feel like even if it breaks, twice, I'm probably still in it for less money than a new OEM one. Same plug-in on the back. Next we need to put the plate on, but now that I'm thinking about it, this would be easier done with this disconnected, so we'll put that on later. And we'll get this all situated first. Just one, two, and three screws. Um, don't even think I'm gonna tighten this down fully. Oh, something just seemed like it broke. Like I was saying, I don't think I'm gonna cinch these down all the way because I feel like it could still break the plastic. So I'm gonna call that good. I think all the buttons are usable. Now we can just plug the nine pin into the back until it clicks into place. Pop this back in. Hey, look at that. We've got working buttons both up and down. The passenger side works. I just had the window lock on. So that's great. Now we have working buttons, controls on this side, and the auto works. So I only have to press and click it once for it to go down instead of having to hold it like I did before. So I feel like this might be distracting. I want to be real with you guys. With the channel, I, I know a lot of you adore this Prelude and Prelude content, and I really aim to make that my focus as much as I possibly can. But with this car being down, I need the other car, the Tacoma, to be in good shape so that way I can still go and do life, you know, get to A and B grocery store. I can't be having to Uber around or walk everywhere that I need to go. So although this car is sitting, the time that I'm not working on this is spent making sure this one is the truck is totally good to go and I don't have to worry about things. So getting the valve cover gasket job done was a big thing. Even just doing the oil was really important to get done. But I've got the car cover taken off the Prelude. Another reason to uh, motivate me to start working on it again more and more. So I'll let you guys in on some progress. I did go ahead and order tires front and back for this thing and I've gone ahead and removed the rear wheels. So that way one, I can clean them up, but then also I can start addressing this rust and have easier access to it with the Prelude up on jack stands and the wheels off. It's just a little bit easier to work in there. Trust me when I say that I wanna be driving this car and making content on it as badly as you wanna be seeing it, but it's gonna get done at the pace it gets done. Unfortunately, life is life. It, it is hot out here. I'm, I'm about to sweat through my shirt. Life is life and I get to work on it when I can and I get to make you guys content whenever I'm able to. But I just wanted to be real with you guys, let you know that I understand that you want and expect more content on this car, and I, I do want to fulfill that need for you guys. So I say it all the time, but slowly but surely it'll get done. I think you guys are gonna enjoy the content along the way. I've already done the two front wheels, and today I'm going to be cleaning up both the inside and the outside barrels of the rear wheels. I mean, these are absolutely disgusting. So I just wanna get these cleaned up before I take them to go get new rubber put on. I'm gonna have the new tires here in the next day or so, and I wanna have these things ready to go. So this morning, I'm gonna be taking off the rear bumper on the Prelude because I want to be tackling this section around the rear wheel arch next. This rust is probably the worst, actually it is the worst on the whole car, and it gets worse as we go down. If you can see that, there's a hole on the bottom of the rocker panel, which is pretty unfortunate. It's gonna be the hardest thing to fix as far as the bodywork goes on this car. There we go. Oh, I think it's about time to replace this setup anyways. It's been a good while since I've taken the rear pumper off on this thing and I honestly was scratching my head, searching around with a flashlight to try and figure this out. I'm pretty confident the taillights need to come out first. If my memory serves me right, there's bolts that go down like this along this whole thing, similar to the front bumper, but I think the taillights at this point need to come out in order to get to those. Just kidding. After popping the trunk, 
I remembered these things, these little nubs here. If you can see that just down there, there's two of them, which I've got this kind of fabricated trunk in here. So yours probably looks different, but those two bolts I think might do the trick. I may not have to actually take off the tail lights, which is a blessing. Buffers off. To get access to all this rust that looks like it goes down a little bit further, you gotta take these off for sure. Oh boy, that's gonna strip out 100%. That one's good. Oh no, they're those stupid retaining. Ugh, oh, it's gonna break for sure. After a flat bar drill and a chisel, a hammer, and a flathead screwdriver, I was finally able to get these pieces off. And now I can see that the rust does in fact go beyond. It was underneath this, so it was very important that we took that off because I'm guessing we're gonna have to take back probably all the way to here, make sure there's no rust anywhere else before I put any primer back down on this. Pull out this mud flap now, make some more room in here. After a little bit more work, I actually got the trim piece off by reaching my hand through the ashtray in the rear seat and unclipping those ever so fragile clips that are on these trim pieces. So I managed to save all of them so far. Now it's prepped and ready for basically rust removal, which is gonna be a whole day in itself. So, um, but look what just came in. We've got some new tires for the Prelude, all four, and the uh, wheels I've spent some time cleaning up and I'm gonna put them all in the Tacoma now so they're ready to go over to the shop in the morning to be mounted and balanced. Having a Prelude and a first-gen Tacoma, best of both worlds. Get to cruise in the Prelude and use the taco to change tires when needed for the Prelude. Let's go. Just when you thought the video was gonna end, the UPS man shows up and brings me a set of the Basla lights that I ordered. These things, if you remember, I had a set on the F30 way back in the day that were color shift changing lights. So they would actually, depending on how many times you turn them on and off, would fluctuate to uh, three different color temperatures. These ones are a 6,500 color temp, non-changing, but they're gonna do wonders for this first-gen Tacoma. These things are basically like candlesticks floating while I'm going down the road. So it's a much needed upgrade. Let's go ahead and, uh, these are gonna be easy. Let's go ahead and put these in. So here we've got the Basla LEDs. I'm gonna pop these open. We've got a manual, and then we've got our two 50 watt LEDs. Again, rated 6,500 color temp. And then you have the two little components here that I believe they keep the bulbs from doing any sort of hyper flashing and makes the OEM system a lot happier. And because they are a different wattage bulb than your typical halogen, these are what streamlines the whole thing and makes it a basically a fluid process. Let me actually turn on the OEM headlights, even though it's kind of dusk. You should still be able to tell that they're on. And yeah, they just don't, they don't do a whole lot. I mean, especially not doing it justice right now, but nothing but candlelight. I'm sorry about the bad angle. It's the best angle I can literally get you. But I'm just gonna pull off the rubber grommet and there should be a tab on the back that I can release to release the bulb off of the housing. So I ended up fitting the rubber casing around here. I had to make two slits to be able to fit it over this cooling fan on the back. And I kinda wanna maybe trim it even more because I feel like I just want their, this to be able to breathe and get as much air to it as possible. Okay, so the LED is in there, but I am, I am worried that the rubber around it is gonna not allow enough air to get in there. So I think I may pull it back out and trim it back some more. I successfully got the LED in there with about as comfortable as I can be with the rubber encasing around it. So I'm gonna turn it on now and then, well actually first I have to hook up the uh, little ballast piece to it, but then I wanna turn it on just do a look over, make sure nothing's getting too hot and see how it compares to the OEM. So next I just need to attach one of these to the appropriate sides. And then we just have to plug the factory connector into this connector here. Okay, and we should be in business now. Go ahead and um, try and turn this on and see what kind of heat and light it produces. There we go, light is on. That looks pretty darn bright. In comparison to the OEM side, 
This is what we're looking at. I'm, I'm thinking this one is gonna be way brighter at night. It's actually super obvious, even in daylight, to tell how much brighter this is gonna be than the OEM bulbs. It doesn't feel too hot yet. The fan on the back is definitely running, I can feel it. I'm gonna turn the high beams on. Definitely much brighter. The results on these Basel lights look freaking awesome. The color temperature is spot on. It's like a true white color, if you were to ask me. Even during the dusk hours, these things look so much brighter than the OEM ones do. So we'll have to see how they do at nighttime, but I think these are gonna be just as good, if not better, than the ones I had on the F30. gonna do it for this one. I'm gonna pick things up tomorrow morning and uh, begin taking this rust out. So uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. I hope you're equally as excited for the tear down of this prelude and rebuild back up. I'm seeing you in the next episode. Keep elevating. Adios.